Let the church say amen. Yes, healing and miracles. What a great God we serve. I tell you, many times we often forget that God is the God of the big. He's the God of the small. Whatever you need, you just ask him and he will give it to you. I know it's been a hard week for some of us. The devil has been on our tracks. But that's all right. We're walking down the road with the king. And when you're on the road with the king, you don't worry about who's nipping at your heels. Because we have a God who's on our side. We are in the midst of our 40 days of prayer and fasting. And today we're going to talk about prayer. Our scripture lesson came from the book of Acts chapter 12. Elder Legal read verses 1 through 9. And I'm going to pick up with verse 10. We're going to do a little reading today. Acts chapter 12. And we're going to pick up with verse 10. There the author, Dr. Luke, continues with this. It says, when they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate that leadeth unto the city which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews." And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou Art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea And their abode. The subject today is just two words. Pray, church. Pray, church. Let us pray. Father, as we open your word, we pray that you will speak to our hearts. Pray that you hide me behind the cross and as the word is proclaimed. May the Holy Spirit burn away the dross from our hearts. And may he light a fire under us. And as a result of our experience today, may we be drawn closer to you, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray, church. During that time of the early church, there were some growing pains. A new church was in the block, and the Jews did not like it. And because they did not like this new church... They found that it was politically correct to get Herod to work for them. And it said in Acts 12 that Herod stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Has anyone ever stretched forth their hands against you in church? Feel like you are being persecuted when you've done nothing. Feels like everybody's attacking you. You can't say anything because everyone is against you in the church. But if they did it to Jesus, they'll do it to you. 
And it doesn't matter if they are up there as a pastor, the elder, or the deacon. Or even just a plain old pew member. The devil will use anybody he can to knock you down. But I've come to tell you that I know somebody who's stronger than the devil. And because he's stronger than the devil, you can talk about me as much as you please. I'll talk about you. And when I talk down on my knees, I'm trying to tell you that I need help. Not you, not my mother, not my father, but I need help. Prayer is something that we all need to do. Many people think it's a lost art. I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to pray for. I'm too wicked to pray. Well, if you believe that, then the devil has a lot of land to give you. And he will give it to you. But in the end, your soul will be lost. In Acts chapter 12, the Apostle James, he had just a short ministry of approximately 13 years. For you remember, after Jesus had died in about A.D. 31, we now find ourselves in A.D. 44. And Herod was sitting on the throne. And James, you remember him, one of the sons of thunder. He could preach and he could speak. And sometimes when you say something for the Lord, people don't like you. But that's all right. Say it anyhow. And he said something. And he received death by the sword according to the scriptures. Now, if you were a Jew, you would have been stoned. If the Jews had their way, they would stone you. But they were under Roman authority. And so the punishment James received was death by the sword. And Herod was so glad that he got James, he said, now I'm going to get Peter. And the Bible says he took Peter, threw him into jail. And it was around the time of the Passover. And once Peter was thrown into jail, he was there. He was on death row. It was just a matter of time. Before Herod would slay him too. But that's where the church comes in. You know when there's one of our own that's going through some hard times. When someone of the family is hurting. We need to get down and pray. Let the Lord know that we are agonizing with him. Because someone in the family is not being treated right. And when you pray. You pray until God answers. And so the church got together. And they did a whole lot of praying. Today I have just three points I want to share with you. Pray church because it's a time of trouble. It's also a time of prayer. And it's a time of power. You must remember. Prayer is a privilege that we all have. Anyone and everyone can pray. Any time of night or day. Just lift up your voice and pray. If you want to know how to pray, listen to children. I've often heard children pray for that big shiny bicycle. Or now they need an iPad. And they have no inhibitions when they pray and say, Lord, I would like an iPad. With all the bells and whistles. And the parents, of course, are listening to the prayer. And they are shuddering. But children do not care. Because we told them to pray and God will give them what they need. And they pray because they believe God will do it. When some of us get too mature and we're on our high horses, we don't pray like we used to pray. We just pray to have it as a form or a fashion. And we think that we're doing something. But if you want to learn how to pray, watch the children pray. And even though it's sometimes amusing, what they pray for is serious. And they expect results. When we pray to our Father, we should expect some results. There's private prayer where we go into our secret closet. I don't know where your closet is. And you don't need to know where mine is. But when you go into your prayer closet, talk to God. He already knows what's on your heart and what you need. But in your private prayer life, you can tell God anything you want and you can confess everything you need to confess. And when you confess it to God, it stays right there. As a matter of fact, he says, I'm going to take it and throw it into the depths of the sea and I will remember it no more. 
But if you go to your friends, have mercy on everyone. Because it will not stay there. It will go around the world and come back to you and knock you flat on your back. So in your prayer closet, you talk to God. Now, when we have public prayer, we come and we want to praise God. Public prayer is a time that we come to church and we pray for the corporate body of the church. There are some who are sick. There are some who have suffered the loss of loved ones. Some who need jobs. All of those things. And we don't have to be long with the corporate prayer. You can pray and the Lord knows and he will answer. Sometimes when I was younger and they would pray, my knees were a little bit better then and I could take it. But I've gotten a little older now and the knees can only take so much. And sometimes as you're praying, if the knees are hurting, the prayer is not getting through to me. If I'm thinking of something else, the prayer is not working. So when we come to church, pray, but we don't want you to pray all day. You just pray and the Lord will answer in his own way. I can identify with the young people because sometimes if I'm not in a good mood, if you, the less you say, the better. The more you say, it doesn't matter. You would have lost me after dear father. Prayer in church is something that we need to do. But remember, you have an audience of many different personalities. And the Lord is working with all of us. So let's pray and let's enjoy worship. Because when we enjoy worship, the church comes together and they enjoy themselves. But now, like I said, this was a time of problems. Here there were attacks on the apostles. James was... Killed with the sword. Peter was thrown in jail. And the people began to wonder. If they run out of leaders. They're coming for me next. That often happens. If you happen to be in the vicinity of someone who is doing something wrong. And I remember this when I was a child. And if someone was getting a spanking. And you wanted to try to help. If you got in the way. You are going to get it too. And so you had to watch out. If it was their turn to get spanked. Just stand back. Let them receive their punishment because it won't last always. But in the Bible days, here Herod was going after the apostles. And he got two of the chief apostles, the big three. You remember Peter, James, and John? They knew a little bit more about Jesus because he invited them to the inner circle. And as they came in, he began to teach them what he was going to go through. And what they, as the future church, would have to go through. So the people began to say, there's something happening now, and I've got to watch my back. And pretty soon fear set in, the fear factor. You know, if you begin to threaten people, they'll straighten up, won't they? Well, sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. Stories told of a little boy once. He's a very ambitious little guy. And in school, he would always be Jumping up, doing things out of turn. So one day the teacher got to the edge of his patience. And he went to the little boy and sat him down. And said, don't you get up until you get permission. And after a while the teacher says, now what do you think about that? He says, I may be sitting, but I'm standing in my mind. <laughs> there are times in our experience... When people will threaten us to the nth degree. And we may sit down and we may cover up and hush up for a while. But in our minds we still have to go forward. And proclaim what we know. Because like Jeremiah it may be shut up in your bones. And somehow it's going to come out. There's only a certain limit that you can do, go when it comes to doing God's will. And so with this early church. They were told to go out and tell about the love of Jesus. And even though they were the minority, they went with power and they went with the Holy Spirit. And when you go with God, he will go with you. But you must understand that there was also an adversary. Back then, it was Herod. Herod was trying to wipe out the infant church and was trying to wipe out all the apostles. 
But he was not the adversary. The adversary, as Revelation says, is the accuser of the brethren. There was war in heaven and he was kicked out. And the Bible says, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. And when the devil comes down, he doesn't come as some smiling, pitchfork, little devil. He comes as an adversary who wants to take you out. And he doesn't care how he does it. But when he takes you out, he wants to take your soul. The church finds itself in trouble with the devil today. There are devils without. And there are devils within. Sometimes when you come to the door, you don't leave what you brought with you. And you bring it on in. But that's good. Because sometimes when you're in the church... God can get a hold of you. And when he gets a hold of you, he can take the devil out of you. And even though the devil may come in, we want the person that goes out to be a soldier for the cross. We often understand that we have to come to God just as we are. In fact, Paul says in Hebrews 4.16, Let us come therefore boldly to the throne of grace, that we may find help and obtain mercy. And grace in the time of need. We don't need to let anyone tell us that we can't approach God. Because of what we've done. What our past has been. Or who we are. We come boldly because Jesus has opened the throne room of heaven. And if we just offer up our prayers. He will help us. Jeremiah says. Call unto me and I will answer thee. And show thee great and mighty things. Which thou knowest not. Many of us think us a legend in our own time. And we are wise beyond measure. But God says, call upon me. And I will show you something. I will show you things that you have never heard of. And when God opens it up to you, all you can say is, wow. Wow. Words of wisdom. And God will bring it to pass. It was a time of problems back there for those apostles and the early church. But because they knew God and they believed God would bless them, they continued to go forward. Oh, yes, the finances were low. The world that looked at them was mad because of what they were saying. And they said, we can't do it. Well, the church in the 21st century, the finances are low. The world does not like you, but that's all right. You serve a God who sits up high, and you are the apple of his eye. And if you're the apple of God's eye, no one can hurt you, because God has his hand right over you. We are not immune from troubles, but troubles don't last always. Sometimes you may think they do, but they don't last always. Not only was it a time of problems and trouble, but it was a time of prayer. The Bible says here in Acts chapter 12 that after Peter had gotten out of jail and he was going along the street, he went to a certain house and they were having prayer meeting that night. You know, we have prayer meeting on Wednesday nights. And sometimes you need to come on out and pray and just agonize. The Lord penned these words. Could you not watch with me for one hour? Prayer meeting is not long. But when you get together, there is power in prayer. And when you come together as a church family, you pray and then you study. And God gives you the power to make it on through. It was a time of prayer there in the house of Mary, the mother of John Mark. Here's something interesting about this time of prayer. Acts 12, 5 says it this way. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. They were having a prayer meeting for Peter that night. Wouldn't it be nice to have a prayer meeting for you when you need it the most? And the saints call your name out. And they have your name on the altar. And they pray without ceasing. Sometimes we say we don't know what to pray for. 
Well, if the Lord woke you up, thank him for that. If he put food on your table, thank the Lord. If he put clothes on your back, be appreciative. For if you just wander and go along the street, you'll see some who may not have arisen that day when you ride past the cemetery. You may go under some underpasses and those who have no homes are sleeping there. And there are some who have been without food. But you want to thank God that he's given you this opportunity. And with that opportunity, you need to pray that he leads you to help somebody also. There's a word called push. And we believe it's something that we just push. But we say you should pray until something happens. Many of us just pray and then we leave it. But if you pray and you agonize, God will answer it. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So you need to pray and just pray until God answers you. Someone ought to get a prayer through. Have you ever heard of that? Well, the someone should be you. We all should be able to get a prayer through. Because we stand in the presence of a holy God. Jesus, as our intercession, has given us the ability to just call on his name. And even if we don't know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit takes our prayer and then he massages it and puts it in the language of heaven. And even though it comes out feeble from our lips, when it gets before God, he has an answer for you because he knew just what you need. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. It was a time of fervent prayer at Mary's house that night. But there was one thing about it. In your prayer, you've got to be specific. Many of us often pray this prayer, Lord, bless us. How do you want to be blessed? If you need finances, you better ask him. If you need health, ask him. If you need peace of mind, ask him. But if you're not specific, you may be waiting and waiting and waiting because when God blesses you he blesses you in ways that maybe you haven't even thought of but if you want to get the prayer answered ask him for something specific sometimes when we pray we pray in a lackadaisical casual bland and half-hearted manner and when you pray like that it may go up to the ceiling and bounce back But when you pray as one who has authority and one who believes God will honor your request, it goes through because the Holy Spirit takes it and he works with it. You also have to be a faithful prayer. If you didn't believe in your own self or believe in the prayer that you're making, surely it's not going to come to pass. But if you have faith to believe and you have faith in God, God will answer your prayer. That night at the house, the congregation joined their voices, their hands and their hearts, and they reached out to God and asked him to bless them in restoring Peter to the assembly. Faith is an essential ingredient in our prayer life. Hebrews 11 6 but without, says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Jesus also said it this way in Matthew 21, 22. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. 1 John 5, 14 says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that he, that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. God gives us just what we need, just when we need it. When you focus in on God, he will hear your prayer. The last thing about this time of prayer, it was family prayer. The church family was together in the house. And in the room, they were making petitions known for Peter. And they were praying that he would be released. Their prayers had power because they united their will with the will of God. 
They joined their hearts to God and they lifted up their voices. Many times our prayers are like this. Give me, give me, give me. But our prayer should be, Lord, remember my brother over here. Remember my sister who's going through this. Remember the church and their mission. When we pray for others, we are blessed ourselves. So we need to give up the gimme prayers and ask the Lord for others just what they need. It's a time of prayer. And even in our church today, we've got to pray more. You don't have to pray with your eyes closed all the time. Sometimes you can pray with your eyes open. You can pray standing up. You can pray riding along in a car. You can pray anywhere you are. But when you're in the attitude of prayer, then Paul's words, pray without ceasing, have a new light. Because you're always in tune with God. And you can be in touch with God. And before you call, he answers. Because he's a God who's always on time. Lastly, it was a time of power. As Peter went out the gate that night, it says that the gate opened on its own accord. Now we know it was another angel that opened the gate. But you must remember, when the Bible pens some words, it makes you want to shout. First of all, you remember that Peter had a quaternium of soldiers. That means there were 16 of them. Now, they all weren't on duty at that particular time. But the way this jail was set up, Peter was on the inner part of the jail, chained to two soldiers. And outside the door of that jail cell, there were two soldiers who were guarding Peter. So there were four right there. The other 12, well, who knows what they may have been doing. They could have been sitting around the fire. But they were awake because they knew if the prisoner got away, their lives would be required. They could have been playing some games. It could have been the winking game where you kill somebody. It could have been a game where they were having a good time. And then they said, oh yeah. Sometimes you got to watch where you are. Because when you play games, your prisoners may get away. But that particular night, the Bible says that there was an angel that went in. There was a light that shone. And Peter was fast asleep. Those who trust God can sleep through certain situations. And when they sleep, they sleep in peace knowing that God has it all in control. But the angel went over and the Bible says he smote Peter. He said, Peter, get up, my man. It's time to get out of here. So as the chains fell off, Peter put back on his garment. And he and the angel went past the other soldiers and all the rest of them. They went out into the street in the cool of the night. And then at a certain point on the street, Peter looked up and the angel was gone. But Peter knew that there was a lot of praying going on at the house. And he went to the house. And before he got to the house, he got to the gate. And he started knocking. And one of the young ladies named Rhoda came to the door or the gate. And Peter says, let me in. And she was so glad she heard his voice. She ran back to tell the others, Peter's at the gate. And of course, they said, you must be out of your mind. There's no way that Peter is at the gate. But she insisted that Peter was at the gate. And they said, no, it's probably his angels. You know what I read? The Jews believed that a guardian angel was assigned to every man. And when the angel appeared in human form, he assumed the man's likeness. So that's why they told her, You must have seen an angel. After a while, since she persisted, they went and they opened the gate and there was Peter who had been knocking at the gate. And the Bible says that they were all astonished. But Peter says, praise God. I know it was him that brought me through and because of the prayers of the saints, I'm here today. Sometimes we need to have faith like the grain of a mustard seed. And when we pray, we can tell a mountain to move. And that mountain will move as God has said. We may be astonished at what God does in our lives and in the lives of others. But you must remember, it's a time of power. 
and power is given to us because God has given us the ability to be co-laborers with him. And because we're co-laborers with him, we should pray that God's will be done in our lives and in the lives of many others. And we remember the phrase, the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. And because the Lord is in charge of the battle, all we need to do is to let him have his way. He is a sovereign God, and he knows how to win battles. He's won many battles in my life. He's won many battles in your life. And because he's the captain, and he is the commander of all the heavenly forces, he comes to us and says, pray, church. Because if you pray, I've got you in the palm of my hands. The Bible says we are a chosen generation, royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. You have not been called out of the world to sit on the pews. You have been called out to be energized and to go out and to win souls to the kingdom. You've got to pray that God will lead you in the right direction. Yes, there are times of problems and there's coming a great time of trouble down the road. But if you take the time now for prayer and study and fortify your mind, when the time of trouble comes, the Holy Spirit will be right there with you to bring back to your remembrance those things that you've studied. And God is going to put his seal on you. And those who have been sealed by God will be able to go through the time of trouble because they've made it their determination to go all the way with Jesus. And all power has been given unto us. And because God has given us the power, we need to go and to proclaim that God is coming. And he's coming real soon. I don't know about you, but when prayer is being made, When prayer is being made, we should avail ourselves of every opportunity to come and to be part of the prayer group. And even if you may not pray, you can feel God moving in the room. And when God moves, I want to be part of that movement. There is something about the people of God. We're not perfect. But we serve a perfect God. And when he brings us together, he knows how to touch us in the right places. He knows how to burn off the rough edges. And God knows just what we need. But he expects us to ask in faith, nothing wavering, and he will answer. So yes, we're in 2013, but pray, church. Pray. Pray for yourself, but pray for others. Because soon and very soon, the king is coming. And when the king comes, I want to be ready. And when he comes, I want to go to live with him forever and ever and ever. Watch.
ask the Lord to see you through after you've done all you can you just stand tell me how can you handle the guilt of your past tell me how What a privilege it is for us to stand for God. At the end of chapter 12 in Acts, Herod the king had gone to a place and he made a great oration. And at the end of the oration, the people said, this is the voice of a God and not a man. And it went to his head and because he did not give God the praise and the credit, the Bible says that God destroyed him earlier in the chapter says an angel smote Peter on the side and he woke up at the end of the chapter said God smote Herod and he died you want God in your life and God wants to cleanse you of anything that is a hindrance and a separation between you and eternal life it's my privilege to talk to God through the medium called prayer. It's my privilege to stand between God and those who may not know him as their personal savior. It's your privilege and opportunity also to stand between a dying world and the living savior. As we've come here to the second Sabbath in 2013, we want to emphasize that we have to pray and pray much because time is winding up, Jesus is about to come. Doesn't matter how old or how young you are, Jesus is coming. And he's given us all the opportunity to get ourselves right with him. This Sabbath, before we close, there may be some who have not had the best prayer life. There may have been some who have neglected to pray. There may be some who say, I still don't know how to pray. But today is the day that God has given you the opportunity to come to him and to say, I want to draw closer to my God and to allow him to work in my life. If there's someone, man, woman, boy or girl, who wants Jesus to be number one in their life, who wants Jesus as your personal savior, I invite you to come. Give me your hand. Give your heart to Jesus. Because this is the opportunity where you can say yes to God. Because he is a savior. And he's coming soon.
Our God is a God who does not care who you are. But He's a God who wants you just the way you are. And then He will fix you. Because He is God. We serve an awesome God. The Almighty God. And because our God is a good God, He loves us. It's an everlasting love. And I like to say that everlasting love of God is like little cords that once He gets you, He draws you to Him. And because He draws you, God will work with you. I love a God who never gave up on me. And in spite of myself, and in spite of me running away and trying to hide and continuing to do things, God still has that voice. And that voice says, come to me. Come to me because you are a work in progress. And I'm not finished with you yet. The Almighty God, He is our Savior and our King. So while God is speaking to your hearts, just come. Because we serve a God who never, never gives up. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we stand here because we recognize you as our Savior. We realize that without you we can do nothing. And because we are standing, we know that you stand by our side. You will order our steps. And you will point our steps into the path of righteousness. And so we ask right now for those who've come forward that you seal their decisions to continue to walk every step of the way with you until you return in glory to claim them as your children. We also pray for those who've come who are praying for others, whether they're spouses, children, parents, co-workers, brothers and sisters in the church, whoever they're praying for, 
We ask that you will hear our prayer. We ask that you forgive us of our sins so that as we pray, we are clear channels that you can communicate through. And as we pray, dear Father, we ask that you will give us the answers. May we be specific in our prayer. Our prayer today is to save us and our families. So that when you make up your jewels and you ask where is that flock that was given you, we'll be able to say, here we are. We ask now that anyone who is still standing here are seated in this auditorium as the Holy Spirit is moving them. Move them to make their decision to be part of the family of God and to have Jesus as their personal Savior. And then when time shall be no more, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and honor for what you've done in our lives down here. For we recognize that it was because of love you went to Calvary's tree, gave your life for each and every one of us, that we may be joint heirs with you in the kingdom. And we say thank you for that privilege. And we say thank you for Jesus who made it all possible. For it is in his worthy name and his precious name that we beg these favors. And those who agree said amen. Amen. And amen.